Hi everyone! Thank you for joining me today. This is a video that is part two in my We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle series, Stencils, Stamp, and Sketch Oh My! In this video, we will look at some of the creative possibilities on working with our stamps along with the We Are Memory Keepers Freestyle Sketch Heat Pens. If this sounds interesting, I hope you'll stay tuned. I'm Stephanie, I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com and I like to make detailed tool and product videos that help us all become more creative and make things that we enjoy. In part one of the series, I looked at We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens and using them with stencils and I will link that in the description below. And today we're going to look at look, working on stamps and then I will have a third part in a future video on sketching or handwriting with these. So let's explore some of the ways that we can use our stamps with these. And I think that um, woodblock stamps, clear stamps, cling mountain stamps, I don't think there's going to be any limitations on working with these and these tools. I want to just briefly tell you what these are if you've never seen a video before and I have a detailed video which I will also link. The We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens are heat activated pens that transfer special heat activated foil to a project. Now it can be um, paper or cardstock. I have seen wood and leather and vinyl and any number of other things that you can do. Because these are handheld tools you're not limited to what can go through a laminator or what can go through a die cut machine. These are powered with USB plugs. So it can plug into any type of power that you have that is USB that includes a laptop, it includes a cell phone adapter like I have here, it includes maybe a power strip that you might have off to the side somewhere that um, has a USB port in it. There's any number of ways to uh, power this. The one thing that you want to keep in mind is that the cord length is about three feet. So you need to be within about three feet of your project. Or excuse me, three feet of your power source. So today I have heat up the broad pen. There are four pen tips and I've got three of them with me today. We have broad, fine, and standard or medium. I'm going to put these other two aside for now and actually you can work with any size when you're working with your foil or your stamps, I'm sorry, stamps. You can interchange these and use different widths for different parts of the stamp if you want. But for now I want to start with the broadest point pen. When you're working with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle, it is very helpful to have a heat resistant surface that is smooth underneath you. So I am working on the Foil Quill Freestyle Magnetic Mat, or the Foil Quill Magnetic Mat. It can be used with Freestyle or the original heat pens. And this is a thin metal mat that is perfectly smooth. The grid lines are etched into it or screen printed or something onto it so that they don't come off yet but there's no raised area at all and it comes with thin flexible magnets two small ones and two long ones and pretty much any magnet that you want to work with will work on this it's a metal piece the We Are Memory Keepers heat activated foil is actually more of a film it is on, it is attached to a very thin fine carrier sheet that is clear. So you think you're looking at foil on the top, but what the main thing is that you're seeing is a clear carrier sheet. And underneath is the heat activated part of it. The important part of this is that you can draw or stamp or um, somehow get a image onto here and the image is not going to transfer onto your foil. So you're not going to wreck your foil by stamping on it. You're not going to wreck your foil by writing with a sharpie or um, you know using some other method to transfer your your project onto your foil because there's a clear carrier sheet on the top. 
So to start off with, I am going to take a card front and I'm just gonna put it on my board. And I'm gonna stamp an image or transfer a foil piece image right in the, somewhere towards the middle. At this point, I'm not overly precise, but you can be. And then once I have my card stock down, which is where the foil is gonna go on to, I'm gonna start with the longest sides and put magnets down. And the goal with the magnets is not only to hold your project down, but is kind of to keep the foil tight or taut. If you wanna use that word, that's an interesting word. But I want to make sure my foil doesn't wrinkle if at all possible. Now it's gonna wrinkle some, that's just kind of the nature of it. But the minimal wrinkling that we can achieve, the better for our final project. I have a very simple image from the Hero Arts 6x8 clear stamp set called Stamped Just For You. And this has got some really cute images for stampers um, and sentiments. But I'm just gonna take this cute envelope and I am going to foil it onto my project. In order to put your image onto the carrier sheet, which your foil is attached to, you want to use an archival ink. Um, Ranger archival ink um, stays on, would work well. Anything that is um, not going to be anything of a permanent solvent-based ink. And then I'm going to line up where I kind of think I want it to go on my project. And actually, I probably need to move this out of the way. And lightly stamp it down. No pressure because it's a smooth ring, it's a smooth surface, so you don't want to smear it. And then you just want to wait just a bit for it to dry a little bit or it will smear. So I have the broad foil quill pen heating up. You can tell by the little light that it's plugged in and heating. And I'm gonna zoom into the project as I work on it. When you're foiling your project, just a tip or trick, you want to move slowly as possible. It minimizes wrinkling and you don't need to have any pressure. The heat is going to do all the work for you. So you don't need to push hard or to you know, pull it. You want to minimize wrinkling and you can move, move fairly slowly to transfer your foil. Now let's remove the magnets. Peel back our foil. And I have, there's the foil sheet. And I have a cute little envelope foiled onto the front of my card. Finish this off. I am gonna scribble a bit of blue ink paint over it in a messy sort of way. I am going to stamp a sentiment also from the Hero Art Set. I'll 
I'll add just a couple hearts. And I have a cute little card, fast and simple, with a foiled envelope and a cute sentiment that says, I love you more than my stamp. And that's a lot. So we can trace a stamped image onto cardstock and even do a light watercolor wash over it. And I have this extra piece that I could use pieces and parts around this later on. Let's try something a little more detailed. Tracing stamps doesn't have to only be simple images. You could take something very detailed and stamp it onto your foil and also trace it. So I have stamped my little leaf and my happy right here. And I'm going to get a piece of cardstock. And this card stock has a slight texture to it. It's not entirely. And this card stock is four and a quarter by five and a half. And lining it up is a little tricky. I have another um, tip and trick for you in a minute if you have a misty stamping tool. Again, I'm using the medium or regular point standard point of the foil quill pen and I'm just going to trace the main lines. Now this is another cool thing is if you had both pens or a couple of pens heat up you could actually trace the outside with a broad pen and the inside leaves maybe with the standard or fine point pen and that's kind of a cool thing to do. For now I'm just going to use the standard size pen. And I'm just picking out some of these interior lines that I want. I'm not going too hog wild here with all that detail. I might even be making up some lines as I go. <laughs> Before I take this off, I'm going to heat up a different pen and I want to go around the outside with a bold pen. Okay, now for the big reveal. Ta 
So there you can see how you can use different pen widths to get different looks on your project. Okay, for this next method of transferring foil to a stamped image, I'm going to be using a MISTI stamp positioning tool. I don't have other stamp positioning tools to, to work with, so I can't say it 100%, but I believe the method I'm going to show you will work for any stamp positioning tools, including the handheld ones with the little sheet of plastic. I believe this will work fine, because the key to this is going to be stamping on a stable surface. The stamp sets I'm going to be using are the word happy from Happy 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 by Lawn Fawn and again this um, beautiful leaf image from Concord and Knight. I have taken a sheet off of my misty stamping pad. If you don't have like a paper pad or something just cut a piece of cardstock or a piece of paper the same exact size as your or the same size that you want to be. It needs to be bigger than your project. So I'm using a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of paper and any piece of cardstock larger than that will work fine. But again this is a free roaming piece of paper here and I can even turn it over. I am going to put my project inside move my magnets out of the way here and you can use magnets however I'm going to highly recommend that you use tape for this pro process because it will definitely keep your project on your board wherever you want it and because we have a free piece of paper we can take it into and out of our stamp positioning tool as needed. And then I could use these if I wanted to. It doesn't matter where you place your cardstock as long as it stays put. If you want to line it up against the bottom or the corner, that's great. Now let's place our stamps where we want them to go on our final project and then close the door of our stamp tool. And then just to start off with, we're just going to go ahead and stamp with any ink that you want to work with. I'm going to stick with archival ink just for the fun of it, but this is just going to be any ink that you want on your project. to bring a reinforcement for magnets. I mostly want to keep the carrier sheet behind this down. Now we need to place our foil. And the foil can go anywhere on your project. But the key is going to be taping it down to the sheet underneath your cardstock. And if you need to go around and make sure that the foil is as tight as you can get it. Now ink your stamp up again with archival ink this time. No matter what you used on the bottom, you want to use archival ink this time. And you do not have to worry so much about all the details or the fine points of this because you're mostly going to be tracing it. When that is all set, you 
You want to take your project out of your misty and put it aside and get your mat or whatever board you're going to use for foiling. My foil is already held down nicely with tape so I don't necessarily need the magnets. Again, I'm just trying to keep it wrinkling from wrinkling as much as possible. And it will hold the project down to the board so that it doesn't come up. I'm using the Freestyle Bold Tip Pen, which I've let heat five minutes, and I'm gonna zoom in so we can look at this process. As you can see, it's not well stamped, but I can see most of the lines that I wanna trace pretty well. So let's go ahead and trace what we want to. And this will be good because I'm only going to add um, lines on places that I want to. I'm probably going to go around the outside, do a couple of the inside lines, and trace the word happy. Now I've kind of gone for an artistic look here and I've only traced some lines, not all lines, as you can see, even on the word happy. Um, eh, maybe I want to go back in here a little bit. Okay, I could do that all day. So let's see if the lines matched up well enough to be used on my final project. And if you peel the tape back on itself, it should come up without any problem, including pulling at your cardstock project underneath. Okay, let's see how it came out. So you could choose to cover your whole project or you could do like I did and just choose certain areas that you wanted to highlight with foil. So this is one method where we put a whole sheet of foil over our project. Let's try a second way. So here is another way to use a, a stamping positioner tool like the MISTI or whatever you might have to apply just a little bit of foil exactly where you want it on your stamped project. You could also use um, multiple pieces of foil with this. So to begin with, I have actually gone ahead and stamped my card front. I have used color ink and put my um, images exactly where I want them to go. And all I really want to do with this is I want to foil the dots on the back of the ladybug. Now it could be that I did that and you know did a different color foil over here or over here. Really with this, the way I'm going to show you how to do this, you could put multiple pieces of foil on your project. So let's go ahead and position our stamps exactly where they want, where we want them to be on our final project. And in my case, it's just these cute little dots. That's all I'm doing at this point. My stamps exactly where I want them to go. My card front is held down with magnets at this point. And I am going to pick up the stamps on the top of my Omnisti. Now from here on out, I don't want anything to move because those dots are gonna go exactly right on my final project, even though I'm gonna cover it up with foil. So I've cut a scrap of foil 
And again, you could see how if you had smaller scraps, you could do different colors of foil. And I'm going to place it on my card front with tape. And I'm going to hold the foil down and try to keep it as tight as possible. This tape removes very nicely, so I'm not worried about harming my card front or my card project underneath. There, my foil all well in place, and it's out of the way of my stamps. Now to stamp onto the carrier sheet, we need to use archival ink. And I could actually do the bug's antenna if I stamped that image again, or the wings. There's any number of things. You don't have to have an outline stamp in order to do that. I can take this off my project off my MISTI and move to my my We Are Memory Keepers foil quill magnetic mat. And I'm only going to put magnets on this to hold my project in place because the foil is held in place very well. Let me zoom you in so you can see. That foil makes it hard to see, doesn't it? You can see that I have just the dots on my project. Go in with my heat quill. And I'm using the broad point pen for this. You can use any of the pens for this. And since they're dots, I'm just going to make a little dot. And make a little wider dot if I want to. Okay. If I had put foil on different parts and stamped over that, I could, you know, have put a piece of foil over here and used green over the edges of this or up the middle. So when you're using little pieces of foil this way, using your stamp positioning tool, you can get multiple colors of foil on your project. And you peel your tape, peel it back over itself. So it releases cleanly, especially from your card front or your scrapbook page or wherever you're stamping. And there I have little dots foiled onto the front of my card that are perfectly flat. Well, thanks again for joining me today for part two of We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens, Stencil, Stamp, and Sketch. Please stay tuned for part three coming soon. And if you have used this tool, please um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to uh, hear any tips and tricks that we could share with everybody on using these tools. Also, feel free to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye!